Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Jordan and my colleague Mira. We're with Northwest Parkinson's Foundation bringing to you Yoga for Parkinson's featuring Renee Leverrier. And um, Renee, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, talk about the class, and we'll go ahead and get started. Well, hi, welcome back to anybody who came um, last season when we were doing this without all the faces and recording. I'm actually kind of excited having the faces in the recording um, to be able to see everybody. Uh, I've been doing yoga for, teaching yoga for, um, well, probably as long as I've had Parkinson's, so 14 years. Um, and I just find it to be incredibly helpful um, with rigidity, with, um, with as much as the physical as the mental, because I, you know, when you get into your off periods and um, all that goes with that, and um, yoga has been just a resource for me that's been really helpful. So I just, I love sharing it with anybody else that might find some help. Um, so from that point, we can just get started. And um, everything I do, can, I use the chair as a prop. It brings the, the floor up. Um, it gives us some security and some, you know, if we're worried about falling or, you know, um, or are we off balance, you know, it's like, we don't want to be worried about that stuff. We want to be safe. And so the chair is a great prop. And you can get a real workout and real stretching using the chair. Use it when we stand too as a as a extra handhold in case you, know, you want that extra balance. So um but anything I do standing can be done seated if you if you're not comfortable or feeling off balance that day or whatever. So everything I do can be done in the chair. So I usually start out just by sort of noticing how we're sitting. And you know, you can sort of sit back and sort of slump down like you might, like you might like you when you're watching TV or when you were a teenager. And just notice when you take a breath in, how it feels, where, where that breath goes. And then go ahead and sit up and walk yourself to the front edge of your chair. And have your knees coming right out from your hips and your ankles are right on your knees. And you're gonna feel the sit bones on the chair. So a, when you use a chair, a, a dining room chair is not probably a good idea. If it's like squishy and it has a really high back, we want more of a of a, a wooden chair or you know like a folding chair. So when you walk your sit bones up to the edge of the chair, feel them pressing down and see if you can make them even because I know we tend to lean one way or the other. I tend to lean to the left. Back when we could go to the hairdresser, our hairdresser always just tell me, you know, she knows my issues. She's like, you sit up. And I'm like, I thought I was. So just go ahead and, and wiggle around until you feel even on those sit bones. And it might feel weird because you might feel like, oh, I feel like I'm tilted. But if you feel that, that it's a cue using that feedback from the chair. And when you get to that point where you feel even, then go ahead and separate your ribs from your hips. So your hips are this like round, you know, oval shape, and so are your ribs. So just separate them so that they're lifted over your hips. And if your shoulders went up at the same time, let those shoulders drop away from your ears. So this is the, called the seated mountain. This is Tadasana. Your seated mountain. This is the basis of all our seated um, poses. So if we, if I get too far and you're like, I can't do that, just come back to this pose. You're pressing your feet down a little bit into the floor and you're pressing your sit bones down into the chair, but you're lifting up out of your hips. You know how in hospitals they have the bendy straws? You have to open it up before you can bend it. So imagine your spine is that bendy straw. So we're gonna open that up nice and tall. And if your shoulders crept up, let them drop away from your ears. And this is your, you can let your hands either rest in your lap or point your fingers sort of down towards the, the floor of the mat. So in this nice, it's, it's pretty active if you're pressing down with your fingers and up through the crown of your head, nice, tall, fine. So it could be a pretty active pose. So this is where we start all the seated poses. And like I said, you can come right back to this pose if, if what we're doing is, is not 
um, something you feel comfortable doing. So let's just start here in our seated mountain. We're going to do some warming up. So let's just circle our shoulders, big exaggerated circles. Squeeze them up to your ears and then go ahead and let your shoulder blades come together and then we're just big exaggerated circles. And then we're going to go the opposite way, squeeze your shoulder blades together and then come forward. You're just getting those shoulders warmed up. And let that go. And notice when you were slumpy how it felt to breathe. Now that we're sitting in this seated mountain, notice when you take a breath in, you can feel the expansion in your ribs, under your collarbones. So let's just take a, a, a really conscious breath in and feel that open. You're gonna go all the way down to the base of your lungs. Don't stop here. Send that air all the way down. And then when you exhale it out, let it all come out. And then when you think you've exhaled it all out, squeeze a little bit more. And notice how you can get a much, much more breath and much more expansion than when we're slumping like a teenager. So um, it just, it's another reason to sit up. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do some warm ups. So we, we circled our shoulders. Let's go ahead and reach our arms out into a T. And you can look and see if they're at the same level. And you're gonna reach, really reach, 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 reach. And then an exhale, give yourself a big hug. And then you're gonna look over one shoulder, back to the center and over the other shoulder. And back to center. Just notice which arm is on top. And we're gonna inhale and reach out again. Exhale, you're gonna have the other arm on top and give yourself a big hug. And then look over one shoulder. Back to center and over the other shoulder. Let that go and shake it out. Let's go ahead and bring our, our hands in front. We're just going to raise our arms up. Turn your palms open so they're facing out. Just going to bend the elbows, touch your shoulders, and then straighten the elbows. So just be very conscious of this movement. You're just bringing your fingertips to your shoulders and then opening up. And let's go ahead and reach our arms out. Palms are up. So you're in a, your arms are in a T and we're gonna do the same thing. Bring your fingertips to your shoulders and then back out. Your shoulders and back out. And now we're gonna bend our elbows and bring them together in front. So you want your elbows and your, your, your whole forearm, heel your hand all over to your fingers. So you're gonna make those all meet. And then an inhale, we're gonna open that up as you're trying to touch your elbows behind you. Your whole chest comes forward. So not your chin. We're letting the whole chest come forward. Your chin stays neutral in line with your, your jawline should just stay sort of level to the floor. We're reaching up. And then we're gonna bring those arms together again and an exhale, bring them together from the elbows all the way up to the fingertips. And let's open that up again on an inhale. And we're gonna exhale back together. Um, let that go and shake that out. Let's go ahead and swing one arm, just get that shoulder juices going. The synovial fluid in all our joints um, needs warming up. So you can just, it's just sort of like a pendulum, just let it swing and then hand it over to the other arm and let that arm swing. And let that go, let's circle the shoulders again. How are our shoulders feeling? We feel a little less, Stiff maybe, and let's, we have a little bit more to do on the shoulders. Shoulders have a lot, do a lot. Our knees get all the all the attention because you know, when you're walking, they hurt. But the shoulders actually do a lot. So let's reach one arm out. I'm gonna start with the right. I'm sitting nice and tall and straight, but I'm gonna reach forward without leaning forward. I'm just letting the the shoulder blade go. I'm gonna reach that arm forward. And then when it's really reaching for I want to sweep it across to the other shoulder and hug it in. My elbow's straight, fingers are reaching. Just getting a, a lengthening in the, in the back of the shoulder. And let that go, let's just switch over to the other side. So let it release a few times from the shoulder blade. And then when it's out, go ahead and sweep it across to the other shoulder and hug it in. And let that go. 
Let's just take another breath and notice where things are. Because yoga is really about awareness. So let's see where our shoulders are. Do they feel how they feel? And take a breath in and just sort of bring your mind's attention to where you, what's going on in your shoulders. Does anybody have any anything that's screaming out that's saying, don't make me do that because it hurts too much? Do we have any pains or um, things we want to avoid? So you can jump in any time if, if there is anything like that. Or something you want to address. If you have, um, you know, there's something that's just been bothering you, I'm happy to do that too. Today we're just going to go over a, sort of a, mostly like a full body reminder that yoga is good for us and we're getting back into the yoga. Um, sort of to prepare us for the, the, the next couple sessions. So we're working on our shoulders. Let's go ahead and we're going to come to the front of your chair. We're going to actually come a little closer to the front of your chair, but hold on to the sides. We're just going to rock our knees from side to side. I'm going to back up a little because I don't think you can see my knees this way. We're just going to rock our knees from side to side. It loosens up the lower back a little bit. And let that go and let's then revisit our seated mountain. Make sure we're still even on our sit bones. And if um if you find that your chair, ideally you want all right angles. So you want your you want right angles with your ankles and your knees and your hips. So if you have a chair that's really longer than your legs, you might want to cushion underneath underneath your feet. Or if you have a short chair and long legs, which I tend to have. Um, I just put a fold up a blanket to give a little extra height so that I have those right angles. So it's just a little, little tidbit. So let's go ahead and get into our seated mountain. Then we're going to drop our hands down. Let's turn our palms out. And when we use the breath, we actually start with the breath. So when I say, you know, on an inhale, you want to start with the breath. The movement follows the breath. So I don't start to move and then inhale. I'm going to start the inhale first. So I'm turning my palms out. I'm going to start my inhale. And I'm sweep my arms up. And then I'm going to exhale them out and open them up. Inhale, I'm going to reach. And then I'm going to bring my fingers together. And you can't see. I'm interlacing my fingers and just my index fingers are pointing up. And I'm going to go a little bit to one side. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you can have one hand on the chair for support, or if you have like a bureau next to you or something for support. And you're going to reach that other hand up and sweep over. If you have both hands up, you're just going to exhale and lean over, arc over to the one side, then bring them back to center again if you want to hold on instead. If that's more comfortable, that's fine, and just reach over to the other side. And then back to center, we're gonna have our arms come down. When you're a big ah, uh, when the arms come down, ah. Uh. Oh, I guess you're muted, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm gonna assume we did a big ah. Uh. Let's do another one just to make sure. Let's turn our palms out, inhale up. Exhale them open. Inhale, reach and then turn your palms out, big ah, uh, way down. Let's go ahead and we're gonna do a few, um, We've got a couple, we'll do a twist because we've worked this, um, we've worked the shoulders and we've started working down into our spine. So the spine likes to go, it likes to bend forward and lengthen. It likes to arc back and, and lengthen the front of the spine. We just did some side bending and it also likes to rotate. And that's what we have a hard time with when with Parkinson's. We tend to lose that rotation capability. So I say twist all day. Do the twist all day. So I'm going to do a twist and then we'll work on our legs and then we'll do a little standing. So first let's just get in that seat mount, seated mountain. We're going to take the right hand and press it over onto the left shoulder. I'm going to take the left hand, reach out, and then I'm going to sweep it around and I'm going to follow it with my gaze. So I'm sweeping it around, but I'm also noticing if my back starts to round. I want my back to stay straight. So I'm following 
my left hand sweeping around to the left, following with my gaze. And I'm noticing if my back starts to round. If it does, I want to put that hand down in the back of the chair. If you, wherever you get to, behind you, go ahead and put that hand down. And we're going to lift up. On an inhale, you're lift up out of the spine, and then exhale. Go ahead and press into that shoulder. So you're pressing back on the shoulder, and you're turning your whole body to the left. So you're turning the sit bones, the tailbone, the hip bones, the ribs. And if you want to take that hand from your shoulder and reach back to the chair, as I have a chair, for a little extra oomph. Just make sure on an inhale you lift up and exhale we're going to turn. So you want your whole body turn, not just your head. And then leave your hand, leave your hands over there and you're just going to turn your head to look over the other shoulder. So now we're sort of bringing ourselves out. And let that go and let's bring ourselves back to center. I hope that feels good because I think twist feels great. Let's do the other side. Let's let the left hand come up, goes onto the right shoulder. And let the right hand reach out. We're going to sweep it around to the right, follow it with your gaze. Notice if your back rounds, if it does, bring your hand down. And, or if you can get all the way back and then just bring your hand down in the back of the chair. And we're going to lift up on an inhale. And exhale, press into that shoulder. And let your whole body change here. You're, you're turning from the sit bones. Again, the tailbone, the hips, the ribs, everything's turning. And if you want to put that hand on the chair for more oomph, you don't have to, you can keep it on your shoulder. And then keep, keep your hands where they are and go ahead and turn your head to look over the other shoulder. And let's let that go. Uh, let's take a, another breath to see where things are at. If, you're if your spine is feeling all twisted out, Sometimes when we move, it relieves some issues, but it makes the other ones more obvious. So notice that too. So sit nice and tall. And we're gonna, gonna reach our arms out into a T. If your shoulders sweep, creeped up, creep up to your ears, let them drop down. We're gonna lift up our spine into that long, bendy straw. And then we're going to sweep ourselves forward. So your heart is reaching out towards the wall across from you as you're coming down. And then your hair is going to reach down towards the mat and you bring your hands down. And if you, if the floor is too far away, you can use a book. Um, you can use a yoga block, but also a, um, just a thick book would help. Um, you know, something solid, a couch cushion, um, if, they, if you want to bring the floor up. So just hang there. Notice what's going on in your in your back and your toes. There's strain in your back. Then go ahead and come up a little bit. And the beauty of the yoga blocks is they can they have the three different directions. So you can use it flat, you can bring it higher with the taller, and it can bring it even higher. So it brings the floor up even more. We don't want to strain our back, so you want to be at a point where you can be in this forward bend comfortably. If your tailbone popped out of the chair, go ahead and reach it back. And then inhale, we're going to curl up. Nice and slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Uh, the, this forward bend is called Uttanasana, and it, it's sort of the heart bowing to the, the head bowing to the wisdom of the heart, which I just think is lovely. Sometimes our head gets in the way too much. <laughs> and so let the heart reach out. Let's do that again and see where we get to. We're gonna reach out. Lift up out of, sorry, I, my, I'm afraid I'm gonna hit Hank here. I don't know if you can see Hank. This is Hank. Sometimes I use him for, um, for showing um, the body parts. So he's over there and I keep afraid I'm gonna hit him. So I'm gonna move him a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock Hank over. And you can see, it's, good, it's just good to show 
But I said there the um the hips are right over, you know, the, the oval part of the hips and the oval part is so that's what I'm talking about. See the hoops at the stand. Um see how the hips are right under the the ribs, see they're they're oval. So when I say separate, that's what I'm talking about. So isn't that cool? Hank is very handy. And uh Let's go ahead and do that forward bend again and just see where we're at. You can even separate your feet a little bit on the mat. I'm going to reach out into a T. Let your shoulders settle down if they creep up. Settle them now. We're going to sweep forward, leading with our heart, and let the head bow down to the rhythm of the heart. You can, if you can walk your hands over to one side, and then walk them back to center or to the other side. Back to center and inhale, we're gonna round up slowly, one vertebra at a time. Inhaling as we come up. Ah, how's that feel? Hopefully that gave you a little lengthening in the back of the spine. Now we're gonna work on, on our legs a little bit and the hips. We're gonna kick one, I'm gonna Back a little further, so you can see my leg. I'm going to kick one leg out. So I've got the right leg. Okay, oh, I, there's no um, right or wrong to which one you start with. I like to start with my stronger leg. Few of you don't like to call them stronger and weaker. Except most of them don't have Parkinson's. We all know there's a stronger and weaker. So go ahead and stick that the one leg up is maybe stronger because what if we work on that one first, the muscle number sort of jumps over to the other side. We have to do it anyway. So I'm looking, I'm kicking that. I'm still on the edge of my seat. I like to say because yoga puts us on the edge of our seat. It's so exciting. Um, it's mostly so you don't, it's not really too, but it's mostly so that you don't. You're not sitting on the muscles that we want to stretch. So I'm going to reach that right leg out and I'm pressing out through the heel. And I'm also noticing that when I did that, I didn't shift. Uh, my, my shoulder's right over my hip, so I'm going to be you know, squared up in alignment. So my left ankle is right under my left knee. And my hips are right in line with my, with my shoulders. And then I'm going to even my Weight on my sit bones. Now lift up out of my hips. I'm going to hinge forward. Okay, keep that chin neutral. We're leading with our heart. Bring your heart down towards the kneecap. And we're only going to get to that part where we feel that lengthening underneath, where you feel that little ooh, not ooh. You don't want to go to that really owie part. That's when you just start to feel that sensation. And just you can hold it there, but don't hold your breath. And we can, we're going to sort of ratchet our way down. So on an inhale, come away from that a little bit. And exhale, go ahead and let yourself come down a little more. But don't get to that ooh spot. That just, that just makes spasms happen. You just want the ooh, not the ooh. We're going to inhale up a little bit. Exhale, lengthen down. So maybe each time you exhale, you get a little further. So we're going to inhale and come up. Exhale, come down. Take the opposite hand. Take the left hand. See if you can reach it towards that ankle, maybe towards the big toe. And then we're going to ease our way up on an inhale. Same leg. We're going to sweep it out to the side. And we're going to do that same thing. We're going to hinge forward. So you feel that sensation on the underside of the leg as well as the inside. Go ahead and exhale down a little bit. You can have a, a block or some kind of support in the center if you want to hold on to that. Again, you're leading with your heart. You inhale up a little, exhale down. And go ahead and bring that body up and we're, we're going to 
turn towards the left knee, towards the bent knee. Let your right hand just come down and fall wherever it falls onto the extended right leg. So we're turning and we're gonna aim the face of our shoulder down towards the kneecap. So we're gonna go sideways. So we're not going forward. So you keep yourself turned towards that bent knee. Keep your left shoulder pressing back and we're just gonna slide sideways. So notice I'm not coming forward. Just sideways. This will get the that the adductors, the inside of your thigh. You tend to be really tight with Parkinson's thing. And it I, I not figured this out that those adductors lengthen, um, you'll sleep better. So keep that left shoulder pressed back. Jamie, your right knee, shoulder down towards the knee cap. Wherever you get to is fine. If you want to add to this, there's no shoulder pain in the left to bring the left arm up. If you and it's not necessary, you don't have to do it, but if you want to do a little more, reach that left hand overhead. So we're not going forward, we're going overhead. And aim for your big your right big toe. Don't worry, we're not gonna get there. And come back, bring that back up. That's a big stretch. So that's called the gate. Feel like a big gate opening. So that feels, just notice how that feels on one side versus the other side. I feel, I feel like I have to do the other side now. So let's go ahead and kick that left leg out. Reaching out through the heel, have the right one, the ankle is right under the knee. We're gonna lift up out of those hips and we're gonna hinge forward. Heart towards knee. And just get to that point where you feel it. And then inhale, come up a little. And exhale, we're gonna exhale down a little more. Inhale, come up, exhale down. Another inhale, come up a little bit, exhale down. Just see if you're getting, you know, a little more. A little further each time. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. And then see if you can reach the right hand towards the ankle or towards the big toe. And then bring that up and let's sweep that leg out to the side. Let's sit nice and tall. Notice that it, you shifted your weight to one side. Notice you want to get yourself back and even on both sit bones your shoulders over your hips. And then you're gonna to turn towards that bent knee. Oh wait, we didn't go forward first. Let's go ahead and go forward first. Just have your heart reach down towards the mat. Nice straight back. And you'll feel that a little bit in the, in the inside of the thigh and underneath in the underside. Inhale up a little bit, exhale down again, you can use Support in front of you if you want to hold on. All right, inhale, bring that up. And now we let the left hand just fall on the leg and turn towards that right knee. Your whole torso turns. And we're going to aim the left shoulder towards the left knee, keeping that right back of that right shoulder pressing back. So just going sideways and feeling that lengthening in the inside of that left thigh. Those adductors lengthening and saying, oh, you're gonna have a good night's sleep today, maybe. And that'd be great. And if you wanna add to that, you can bring the right hand up, not necessary. If you wanna go a little further, you can bring that right hand overhead. Reaching towards your right, left big toe. And then bring that up. You come around. Oh, that's good. How's everybody feeling? Let's take a breath and notice where things are at. So I'm going to stand for the next part. And if if you prefer to stay seated, that's fine. Um, I'm going to walk. I'm going to go through standing without using our hands on the chair. So instead of our feet, ankles right under our knees. We bring our ankles behind our knees. And you walk yourself up to the front edge of the chair. 
your feet are sort of behind, you know, almost under the chair. And we're gonna hinge forward so your nose is over your toes. And then a little pressure into those feet. So your nose over your toes. And you do like you were, you're gonna do the breaststroke. So you're hinging forward, nose over toes, and then let your weight shift down to your feet. And like you're doing the breaststroke, you're gonna come up. And then we're not using our arms on the chair. And that's a great way to practice getting up because um, you know, you get stuck somewhere in the bathroom of a restaurant. And when, when we're allowed to go to restaurants, we, yeah, sometimes those toilets just are too hard to get off of. So this is a great way to, you can practice going up and down. So down, if you want a little counter support, you can reach your arms out. You look and see where your chair is, but we're not, what we're trying to avoid is the sort of, you know, the collapsing of the chair with your arms. And that pushing off and, you know, so we're trying to not use our arms and just use our legs. So go back down, you want to reach your arms out. Just go ahead and squat and, and come down. So again, pick it up, it's nose over toes. Get those feet behind your knees. If you're not at the edge of your chair, it's, it's like mechanically impossible you know, to try and get up if you're in the middle of your chair, in the middle of your seat. So you want to come to the front edge of your chair, your ankles behind your knees. Uh, I could show you this sideways if that's helpful. Here, we'll go sideways. Just so you can see it and from a different angle. So my ankles are behind my knees and then I'm going to hinge forward my nose is over my toes and like I'm doing the breast yoga I'm going to push away from the floor and come up. So that's a little um, tidbit on getting out of your chair. Let's go ahead and put the chair in front of us on the mat. Make sure all four legs are on the mat. Let's stick the camera so it gets, doesn't shut my head off. Sorry, I'm going to make anybody dizzy here. I'm just going to that up a little bit. Uh, okay. I think that did it. So let's um chairs in the front of the mat. All four legs are on the chair, on the mat, so it doesn't slide. And then we're gonna um, separate our feet, mat width apart. Let's see, I'm not sure you can see me. This is what I do every time I stand up. Um, I do these, what I call willow tree branches. They're also called empty coat sleeves. So step your feet, maybe mat width part, maybe shoulder width part. You can hold on with one hand if you want. And just let your arms be floppy. If you're seated, you can still do this. Shift your weight from um, sit bone to sit bone and let your arms be floppy. So what we're doing here is you're shifting your weight from foot to foot and your arms are just sort of following along. You can let them whack in and you know, give you a little massage in the kidneys or in the glutes. And let's bring that to stillness. Ah. So from here, let's bring our feet back to hip width apart. And um, I just, I'm going to angle my camera one more time, sorry. Um, I'm not sure how. Okay, and we're going to keep it the way it is. All right. So now we're just going to bend our ankles and knees. So you can hold on if you want, or you can just have a light touch on the chair. We're just going up and down, bending those ankles and knees. We worked on the shoulders and we'll do a little more on the hips when we sit down. But the spines, let's get those ankles and knees in there. So we're going up and down. And just notice if one leg is more, you know, pointy than the other one, or maybe not. My left ankle is always tighter than my right. But now the next time you're down, just come up and notice how you notice what muscles you're using to come up. Now go ahead and bend those ankles and knees. And instead, we're gonna we're gonna come up, we're gonna push into our feet. It's really press down and push away from the floor to come up. 
and it's very subtle, but it's for me it's different than what I usually do because usually like if I'm bending my ankles and knees and sort of bouncing, I feel like the my upper body is bringing me upright. But if I really focus on my ankles and knees and I focus on pushing into the floor and really pressing down in order to straighten up, that lowers everything. It's like all the lower muscles are doing. Um, the way, I don't know if this makes sense. But um, when, we're, when we're using the lower muscles, we're more grounded. So we're less likely to tip over. So it's just a handy thing. I, I can sometimes be walking. You know, I'm walking the dog and I'm like flailing all over in my Parkinson's walk. And I'll stop. Now it might be in the middle of walking the dog down, you know, through the neighborhood, and I'll press my, you know, bend my ankles and knees, and I'll push away from the ground, and then I'll be able to walk where I'm a little more grounded and not quite so flaily. So another helpful hint for the day: how to use your yoga at home. So let's go ahead and we're gonna. Step just maybe a, a foot away from the chair, and you want to be able to hold on if you need support, but you don't want to bang your, your hands up. We're going to swing those um, arms again, but you're going to bend your knees and sort of like propel that forward, but so through your knees and hips. So we're not really moving the arms, we're just getting them. You don't want to whack the chair, so it's going to be. And let that go. Let's go ahead and come in front and cross each each one, every, every other one. And now we're gonna let that go and do some figure eights, some kayaking. And then we're gonna go the other way. That one always confuses me. I always wonder when I go backwards. And let that go and shake it out. And then do a little bit with them some strength and balance. So let's go ahead and step closer to the chair. We're going to start by bending those ankles and knees. And then let your tailbone reach out as though there's a chair behind you, but oops, there isn't. So we're going to just, we're going to have to pretend that, that our legs are going to have to support us. And that, 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 that's the chair we're sitting in. So if you're seated, um, what you can do is to work the quads is sort of squeeze them together. You can just sort of have your hand on the side of the chair and just push with your feet and just see if you can get a little weight off your, off your sit bones. But for, um, for standing, we're going to let that tailbone reach back. And we're gonna hold and you can hold on to the chair for support. And a little more, you can reach one arm up. And then the other one. And then we're gonna push away from the floor and come up standing. Let your hands come together and interlace your fingers, putting those index fingers up, and we're gonna do like we did seated. So we're gonna hinge over to one side on an exhale, back to center, and over to the other side on another exhale. And then back to center. Let's rub our hands down. Big ah, as they come down. Ah. Good. Let them come to the back of the chair. We're going to step one foot back. And then those who made it. Let those heels press down. And then let your tailbone reach towards the wall behind you. So you're hinging at the hips and the shoulders. I'll show you this from the side so you can see. So our back is nice and straight. I'm going to have to go back one. Or let me have to go forward. I don't know which way you see it here. There, okay. So your back is nice and straight, and your legs are straight. You're like a figure, you're like a, a, an L. So you really let the shoulder blades reach apart from each other, and your head's between your elbows. You're not dropping it down. And if there's any back pain, you can go ahead and bend your knees. And then we're going to step that forward on an inhale. Let the other foot come to meet it. So we're going to stand. And then we're going to bend those knees, ankles and knees, reach that tailbone back. And 
as though there's a chair there, we're just going to use our, we're strengthening the leg. You just want to reach one arm up. And then the other one, we're revisiting this position. And then you're going to push away from the floor and come up. And let our hands come together. Interlace your fingers, let your index fingers reach up. And we're going to sweep over to one side and exhale. And back to center and over to the other side. Exhale, let those arms release. Exhale them down. Ah, circle those shoulders. How's everybody feeling? We doing good? Hope so. Right, we're going to step nice and close to the chair. You're going to step one foot back. And just let that heel come down. Oh, sorry. Slid off the side of my chair. Let's let that heel come down. You can sort of down and upwards. Just sort of so come up your heel down and then up to your toes. You're just sort of lengthening that leg and rocking on the toes. And then go ahead and let the heel come down. And your forward leg, bend that knee and let's do side face again. You want your ankle right under your knee. So you don't want to have that knee forward of the ankle. Put your ankle right under your knee. So you can, bend, you can have that knee pressed up against the chair for support. The wall is also a great, um, a great tool. If you're seated in the chair, you can scoot over to one side and reach one leg back. So the wall, if you have your foot against the wall, your back foot leaning against the wall, that's also a nice support. But you want the, the front knee bent. So we're just in a runner's lunge. You can hold on to the chair for support. And just notice that your shoulders again are over your hips. So when you step back, you didn't you didn't turn. You want to have your body facing forward, shoulders and hips in alignment. And feel that back of the leg, the, the calf stretching. You might feel it in the Achilles a little too. And then come off that that back heel up to your toes and then turn your heel out to the outside and then bring it back down. You know, feel that lengthening on the inside of the calf. We don't always get that part of our calf muscle. And then step that forward. Let's go ahead and do a few, a little two branches to just set everything in straight and, and let that go. Take a breath in and out, notice what things are at. Those kind of things yelling at you, or maybe it's saying thank you. And let's go ahead and we're going to step the left foot back and let that heel come down and just rock on the toes, back and forth on the heel. This is getting a nice lengthening in that leg. We're going to let that heel come down and the front leg bends at the knee. And you can support it with the chair, just make sure it's, over, it's directly over your ankle. <clears throat> and feel that lengthening in the back of that calf. And go ahead and come up on those toes and let the left foot, the left heel sweep out to the outside and then bring the heel back down. And you'll feel that on the inside of the, of the calf. And let that go and walk that forward. How's everybody doing? We have one more um, strengthener around we can go through, and then we'll work a little on the hips and um, have some relaxation. Let's just notice for a moment. We can go ahead and bend those ankles and knees. Notice for a moment what's going on in your face. You know, yoga we always we sort of do from the neck down, and it's like our our face is part of it too, and so. There's a yoga guru who says if you if your face isn't relaxed, you can't relax. So it's really good to start noticing what's going on in your face. Notice if you got those zipper lips, you know, when you get really tense, they get like zippery. Or if your eyebrows are stitched together, and just take a moment to notice your face. And we're not supposed to touch our face in this time of okay, so just see if you can notice it and where your eyebrows are, if they're stitched together, see if you can 
separate them away from each other. Maybe we'll just do a few stretches over here so we can let it surprised and let that go and just maybe frown. And then we'll smile. And then maybe blow some bubbles. Take a big, big breath in. Let it come out your lips like a horse. That's probably my favorite one. Is it it's like it gets your lips all poopy? Ah, I keep a lot of tension in my jaw, so that's a great one to do. Okay, so before we sit back down, um, and if you want to sit back down, if you're tired, that's fine. We're going to turn to the side and step our feet nice and wide. And we're going to bring our arms out. You can use the chair for support or the wall for support. We're, we're in a, our feet are separated. We're going to shoulder width apart or and her. Reaching our arms out. So press down through your feet, out through your hands, and up through your head. This is a five pointed star. So know you press down and out and with all your points your feet, your hands, your head. And then go ahead and reach that hand that's closer to the chair. Reach that wherever you can get to in the chair. Like reach, 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 reach. And then when you can't reach anymore, let your hand come down onto the back. For the seat of the chair, whichever you can let that other hand come up. This is called the stargazer. Gets a nice long side stretch. We'll bring that back up. Let the shoulders come down. Circle all the way. We're going to do the other side. Try to separate our feet about shoulder width apart, and we're going to reach our arms. And again, you can hold on for support to the wall or to a chair, we're going to reach our arms out into a T. Then we're pressing down through our feet, out through our fingertips, up through our head. And that five point is there, we're going to reach, now we're going to reach our hand towards, right hand towards the center. Your weight sort of shifts over to that right leg, and then when you can't reach anymore, let your hand come down to the chair. And then that left hand sweeps up. And then one, one more exhale, and then we'll bring it back. Let's go ahead and have a seat again. We're going to come to the front of our chair. And we're not going to use our hands, or we're going to reach our arms out. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can cross your, short, your arms over your chest and still use those legs to come down. Right, angle that camera again so you can see. There we go. So let's do um let's do a few it was a, that was a lot today so I'm um, gonna do a few um cool downs so hopefully everyone feels good there's a couple of things let's just bring ourselves to the front of our chair again and let those knees flop from side to side just in case that back you know wasn't happy with some of those standing stretches we're just making sure. That lower back is nice and loose. Let's notice our face again. Notice what's going on. Big breath in and as you exhale, go ahead and smile. And let that go. So we're gonna do um when it's called clouds in heaven. That's a nice um it's a great relaxing. Piece. We've done it. We did a lot with opening everything up. But before we do, before we do the clouds in heaven, we're gonna do. Um, this is a fun one. I didn't make this up. It's called "You Will Leave Taller." So we will. We'll end our yoga class. You'll be taller, and it's it's um. It's a lot of it's some lengthening. It. So we do a, a Y, a W, L and T. So that's what but you will leave taller. First, we're gonna go up into a Y. You reach your arms out into a Y. But notice when you do this that you don't just reach up. Notice the difference between that where I'm reaching like out versus reaching up. So I want my front rib cage and my back rib cage to sort of lift. You know, so what I tend to do is go out and just the front lifts. So see if you can notice that when you're reaching up, you're lifting the back and the front rib cage. 
We're reaching up into that Y. And then we're going to bring our elbows down. So you're trying to reach the floor with your elbows. There's your W. And then we're going to press one hand up to the ceiling and the one down towards the floor. There's your L. And we're going to get your arms into T. And let your shoulders drop away from your ears if they crept up. Let your face relax. And let that come down. Circle the shoulders. We'll do it one more time. We're going to reach up into the Y. Elbows bend down into the W. Do the opposite L this time so the other hand reaches up and the other one reaches down. And then bring it out into a T. Let those shoulders drop away from your ears. <sighs> and let that go down and circle one and then the other and then forward. Let's make some puff our cheeks. Get that face in there. Just blow some kisses. Then inhale, exhale out through your lips. You really get your tongue in there. I had a woman who could not make that, she could not make her lips um, vibrate when she, you know, when she just, she tried all the time, she'd spit all over the classroom. She's like, I can't do it. I don't know. It's not like rolling your tongue. I don't think it's like a genetic thing. I think she just, she didn't have very puffy cheeks or lips. She's still trying. All right. I still feel good on the lips. All right. Um, another favorite face one of mine is, um, I didn't make this up either. Go ahead and like pretend you're chewing. And you set your tongue in your lower teeth. Open your mouth wide and wrap your lips around your teeth. So chew, tongue, uh, and an ah. And you're supposed to work all these facial muscles, so there you go. Oh, fishy face. Popping. All right, that's good. Let's go ahead and do our clouds and heavens for closing. So we're going to come to the edge of our seat, and we're going to bring our fingertips together in front. And go ahead and lift them up to your heart. Turn your palms so that you're taking your heart energy and pushing it up into the clouds in heaven. So reach it up and let your hands separate. And when you're reaching up, you're on an inhale. So when your fingers separate, go ahead and exhale your arms down. Uh, and then we're going to do that again. So we're bringing our fingertips together, lifting our hands up to our heart. Turn, take that heart energy and send it up into the clouds in heaven. They, the clouds in heaven need it today. So let's reach, 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 and let your fingers separate. Exhale down. Ah. And one more time, let's say like odd numbers. And then have those fingertips together. Inhale up. Turn your palms up. Inhale, reach, and exhale those arms come down. Ah. Then we're going to do a little relaxation. We worked lots of body parts today. Hopefully we'll feel taller. But this time we don't have to sit up. So you can lean back. You can put your feet up on the blocks or a cushion. Um, if you're near a wall and you want to put your chair towards the wall so your head can just rest on the wall so your neck doesn't have to do any work, that's fine. We're just going to do a whole body scan, sort of a mental body scan. So go ahead and get yourself comfortable. And just take a breath in. Send it all the way down to the base of your lungs. And then exhale it out. Sometimes it, um, to keep your breath nice and even, I, I count. So you can count to, you know, maybe a, a nice steady count to four on the inhale. Pause for just a second and then exhale to the count of four. It's a great way to get your breath nice and even. All right, inhale to the count of four and you can take it. If you can, if it's, you know, I know it's allergy season, but you can start with your nose and come, you know, as the air comes through the two nose, 
അവരാണ് ദേശീയ So if you're having trouble sleeping or you wake up and you end up having trouble falling back to sleep, sometimes the counting breath can help. But what you do is you keep the you can keep that inhale to the count of four, but make the exhale longer. So count it out to six or even eight. And go back to sleep. So you, the, the trick is to make the exhale longer than the inhale. But for now, let's just take our take our mind's eye and, and travel through the body. So let's let's start with our our forehead and you know, notice if your if your eyes eyebrows are get together. If you're just imagine your forehead is a ribbon and it's just smooth and silky, and then your eyes are loose and dropping back into your eye socket. Notice the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid and that space in between. See if you can soften that. And from there, imagine the bridge of your nose is broadening. Maybe the roof of your mouth is broadening. You notice that space between your lips. You can soften that. Go all the way down your neck and shoulders and just with each exhale just let it soften. Send it down your legs. All the way down to your toes. While you're in that wonderful soft spot, just sit there and read it. Um, a poem. It is one of my favorites. Um, it's by Longfellow. Age is opportunity, no less than youth itself. So in another dress. And when the evening twilight fades away. The sky is filled with stars, invisible by day. Then wiggle your fingers and toes and scrunch up your nose and come back into seated. With our seated mountain, we're gonna just do a little more movement to wake wake ourselves up again, so we don't have. Well, we could take a nap. It's good nap time. We're just gonna do a little twist and then um, end for any any questions or conversation. So let's go ahead and just I'm gonna put that. Right hand up on the left shoulder again, but this time we're going to take the left hand and put it around to our back of our left hip or right hip. Right shoulder on left hand, right, big twister, right hand on left shoulder, left hand on right hip. So you're going to press into the hip and, and the shoulder at the same time. So I'm pressing that hip forward and the shoulder back. But I'm not, I'm not going forward or back, I'm just going in a spiral. So you just imagine your spine is just spiraling. And then let that go and come back to center. We're just going to take the left hand across to the right shoulder. And the right hand goes to the left hip, nice and tall. And then you're going to push into the shoulder and the hip and spiral yourself around. And then come on back. Let's <sighs> our hands down, turn our palms out. Inhale, sweep them up. As your palms come together, take some of that heart energy we just sent into the clouds of heaven and bring a little bit of it back down into our hearts. May the sun shine upon us, love surround us, and peace be with
Namaste. And I'm glad you guys came to yoga today. We'll do it again. <laughs>